You guys sound pretty good. Turn to the person next to you and say, I didn't know you could sing like that. Come on, tell them. Ask them. Ask them. Say, you've been taking singing lessons. You've been taking singing lessons. My God. You sound good today. Y'all stay standing, will you? Stay standing for a few minutes. We're in the presence of the Lord. For some of you, for some of you, for the very first time, you, you took a step. You took a step of faith and maybe you just had an aha moment. And that aha moment was that, that uh, you've been trying to fight your own battles. But there's someone greater Amen. who can fight them battles for you. So I love that song, Matt. And I love, where's Matt? There's Matt. I love, Matt, what y'all did. How you changed it from this is how to you are how. Because God is a personal God. He's a personal God. And God wants us to win the battles. But sometimes, I don't know about you, sometimes I fight my battles in my own strength. You ever, you ever done that before? I was watching this movie. Um, it was a while ago. And uh, Ben Stiller was in it, um, if I'm not mistaken. And, and uh, anyways, um, there was this, this point where he was surrounded by the enemy. He thought he was going to die. He thought it was over. Yeah, Ben Stiller, not Ben Affleck. Yeah, Ben Stiller. And, uh, you know, we got to get them details right. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if you know the movie I'm talking about, but it's like he's dead. It's like it's over. There's snow. He's on a mountain. And the enemy has him surrounded. And then all of a sudden, facing the enemy, the enemy's facing him, but facing the enemy, this helicopter rises above the mountain. And what is it? Walter Minnie? Walter Minnie. All, all of a sudden, this, yeah, yeah, this helicopter, it, it's got some missiles on it, man. It's loaded. That It is hot. You know what I'm talking about? It's hot. And this thing, and then all of a sudden he sees the enemy like, oh, they, they have the oh crap moment. And they're like, oh no. And they, they begin to retreat. And he's like, that's right, that's right, that's right. Yeah. Like, you know, all y'all against me and finally you understand. I'm a one man machine, baby. You don't want none of this. But it wasn't him. It was a helicopter. It's the missiles. Are you with me? It was ammunition. It was something bigger than him, higher than him, more powerful than him. Are y'all with me? And when he realized that, he was like, oh, 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 yeah, it's you, it's you, it's you. So when we sing that song, this is how we fight our battles, we're talking about prayer. Because this life that we're living is not a playground, man. That was elementary school. I like to swing in elementary school. I pretend I was a pilot. I sit in that swing, man. Every time I go up, I'd make a noise. I was like, when I was taking off, man. I tried to go higher than everybody else. I was just like, man, this is what it's going to feel like one day when I'm in that cockpit and I'm a pilot. I mean, I'm, come on. I'm telling, and I would, I'd pretend every time. And that, that was the playground, man. I was pretending. I was dreaming. But that was not reality in my life right now. The reality in my life right now is it's not a playground. It's a war ground, man. It's, it's a battleground. Like the devil doesn't fight fair. Like the devil plays for keeps. Like the devil is tricky. Like the devil don't love me. He don't want anything good for me or anything good from me. This, this, this isn't the playground. It's the battleground. This is, this is, man, my marriage. Now I'm not talking right now like... I'm, I'm talking about what can happen. I'm not personally giving a testimony just so you understand. I'm going to say, we even pray for Pastor Tim, his marriage under attack. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying. But can I just identify with the crowd today? Because there are layers here. For some of us, it's, it's the fact that, man, you say, Pastor Tim, my marriage is under attack. For some of you, it's your confidence is under attack. For some of you, it's, it's a relationship that is under attack. It, it's your own flesh and blood. It's under attack right now. And you're going through it. And, and what I want you to know, what I want you to know is that God loves you and God is for you and God sees you. And he cares about you. And wherever you are right now in your life, 
I want to reiterate what I said last week, and that is, if it's not good yet, God's not done yet. If it ain't good yet, you're like, it ain't good. It's nothing good. Do not confuse your circumstances with not being good with the fact that God is not good. Because God is good. And God sees you. And God is good enough that God can help you. So how do we fight? We fight from our knees. We don't fight with our tongue. We don't fight with our fists. Now, I said last gathering, every good father, every good mother, they want their kids to fight. I'm not talking about picking a fight. I'm not talking about being a bully. I'm talking about knowing how to fight. Knowing how to protect themselves. Are you with me? I don't want one day my son faces a fight and he 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 runs from the fight. If he catches himself in a fight, I want him to know how to defend himself. I want him to open a can. I want him to finish it. You started it. Today's a bad day. Because I know how. You know what I'm saying? Watching TV and knowing how to open a can in real life, two different things. I'm, what I'm saying today is he's a good, good father, and he wants you to know how to open a can. He wants you to know how to protect yourself because the devil has flaming arrows coming at you, and they're not little toothpicks. They're not little cute things. The devil has arrows that will take you out, and they are armed right, or excuse me, they are aimed right for your heart. And those things are fiery arrows and they are getting ready to be launched. They're getting ready to be released. You don't even know it's coming, but I'm telling you. That's why the Word of God says that we are to put on the armor of God daily. We are to lift up that shield of faith so that that shield of faith can take care of those fiery arrows. And if you're under attack right now and you're like, it is so complicated. I don't even know what's going on in my life. My life was over here. It was picture perfect. My life was awesome. I loved it. And now all of a sudden it's like all hell broke loose. And I'm telling you, Pastor Tim, I'm watching online in my marriage of 20 something years, my marriage of 40 something years, my marriage of five years, my marriage of a week. It started good. Oh God, help me now. I mean, we a week into it. The honeymoon's like over, really? And you're like, I don't even know. I'm telling you, God wants you to know how to fight back. God don't want you to quit. And I believe with all my heart in this series, what God is teaching me is that there's so many people here that you're coming here and, and it is complicated. It's very complicated. It's extremely complicated. And that complication has your attention, but unfortunately it has your energy. It has your mind. It has your thoughts. It has that control. And God wants you in this series to take your eyes off of your situation. Take your eyes off of your circumstance and put it on him. So this is how I fight my battle. I go to God. But God is who fights my battles. So when I'm not big enough, I'm not strong enough, I can't do it. I can go to God. I can cast my care on him because he cares for me. I can tell him what's going on because he cares for me. I... David said it this way, my strength comes from the Lord. And then he turned around and he said, my strength is the Lord. Where's your strength today? Where's your strength today? Where's your strength? Is it in the bank account? Is it in your investments? Is that where your strength is today? Is it in your job? Because you know that can change. Is it in... Is it in a relationship or is it in the relationship? Where's your strength today? Where are you putting your strength? What, what are you standing on top of that you know even if it gets a little shaky, you're not going to fall down, you're not going to collapse because you got something underneath you. Where's your strength today? This series is about love. Let love be our highest goal. What if love was our platform? What if love was our foundation? What if love was our highest goal? You know what happened? This world would change. But first, your world and my world has to change. And that's why we're here. So I appreciate you coming because a lot of y'all, you're going through some stuff right now. I'm telling you, there's so much turbulence in your life. And there's so many different people. For some people, it's a marriage. For some people, it's a work relationship. For some people, it's a blood relative. For some of you, like your best friend had turned their back on you, talking about you. You don't know which end. Of, you're like, what in the world is going on? And I want to tell you something. God's love for you is your foundation. 
And how do we fight our battles? We fight our battles by just surrendering and saying, I can't do it, God, but you can. For some of you that feel like the enemy surrounded you and this is it, it's over. What I'm declaring in your life today is it's not over. Your deliver is coming. And the arm of the Lord is not short that it cannot save. Nothing is too hard for God. The almighty hand, the unseen hand is getting ready to meet you where you're at. This morning, let me tell you this story. We'll be, you'll be seated. I might be seated too. Uh, but don't be seated just yet. This, this morning, we're getting in the car. Kids loaded up. And I said to them, I said, get out of the car. Come on, come on. Get out of the car. Come here. I want to show you something. I want to teach them something. Fathers, don't miss a moment. Mothers, don't miss a moment. We're not just passing time. We're raising children. And we're raising children to release children. And it's better to raise a boy than have to raise a man. And have to raise a woman. It's better to raise a girl. So I said, come here, come here. I want to show you something. My gosh. All through scripture, wise men said, I saw, I observed. I thought, and then I learned. That's the pattern. I saw, I observed, I thought, and I learned. I saw, I observed, I thought, and I learned. You can learn so much. Listen, young people, you can learn so much just by keeping your eyes open. I mean, in Proverbs, it says, go study the ants. They can teach you a whole lot. Are you with me? And I got my kids around. I said, watch, watch, watch. Look at this, look at this. And there was, an, there was a worm on the ground, and that worm was trying to get across our driveway. And that worm had all the little small pebbles we never realized are in our driveway. But I looked at this worm and it was covered. It was dead. I thought it was dead. I wasn't going to give a CPR, but I was just checking. I was looking at that worm. And then all of a sudden I saw that worm just move just a little bit. It was struggling for its life. Because that worm was not made for the concrete. That worm was made for the sweet soil. I watched that worm, and I went over, and I took a dead blade of grass, and I came over to that worm, and I began to try to help that worm to lift that worm up out of the place it was in and take it to the place it desired to be. You know that's what God did for you? You know that's what God did for me? He bent down. He saw us. It's just a worm. That worm couldn't do anything for me this morning except get in my way and get squished. And the fact that me and our kids had kids and I, we'd walked all over that place and I squished them. I just thought, you know what? This worm needs a little help. You know, God looked down at you and I and he thought, you know what? That that, that worm needs a little help. And they just need a little help. And I tried to help that worm. When I tried to help that worm, that worm started fighting me. That worm started kicking like a fish out of water, man. That dead worm all of a sudden started jumping. He was getting like an inch off the ground, popping up, jumping all over that. I'm like, I'm trying to help you. And then God was like, Tim, So many times I tried to help my children. They're in a place they don't want to be, trying to get to the place that they desire. And I have the unseen hand. And I'm bending down and I'm trying to lift them up. I'm trying to help them. I'm trying to get them up out of the place that's going to kill them. And take them to, like like God says, I know the plans I have for you. Like I knew the plans I had for that worm. I was going to put it over there in the yard. Are you with me? Are y'all with me this morning? And I took that worm, I took it over, and I I put it there, and the kids, they're watching. I'm not sure they were impressed, but they watched it. Some things are caught, some things are taught. Some things are caught. And I went around to get in my expedition, and there was another worm. I'm like, I haven't got time for all this now. (laughs) This worm was on the very edge of the driveway trying to go all the way across I was like alright I'm going to help you too and, and I've been down and picked this worm up why am I telling you this because you know what the Lord just reminded me Tim I've been down more than once to help you I've been down more than once to help you I've been down more than once to pick you up out of a place that you didn't want to be you were so covered up the things around you my God the things around you had got on you they got on you it's bad enough when they get on you but it's even worse when they get in you And God said, I've been down more than once to help you out. I read this morning in Proverbs that a just man doesn't just fall one time, two times, three times, four times, five times, six times. A just person falls down and gets back up. Gets back up. And I I said, Lord, thank you 
that you have seen me. You've seen me in my worst of moments. You've seen me when everything around me got on me. You've seen me even worse when everything around me started getting in me. And God, you, like who am I that you are mindful of me? You ever thought about that? Who in the world are you that God is mindful about you? That, who, who are we? That's what David said. Like, God, who am I that you would care enough to bend down and to pick me up out of the miry clay and place my feet on a solid rock? Who am I? That's how much God loves you. So I don't know what's covering you this morning. I don't know what different pebbles are on you. And, and you weren't made, you weren't made for the concrete. You were made for the sweet soil. That's what you were made from. And if you're not careful, you'll die there. But how do we fight our battles? It's not even in our own strength. For the scripture says, it's not by my might, it's not by my power, it's by the Spirit of the Lord. That's how I fight my battles. And the Spirit of the Lord is who fights our battles. So if you're weary and you're tired and you're like, I just don't think I can do it, then you know what? Just give it to God. Throw up your hands and say, God, I don't know what to do, but my eyes are on you. And I promise you in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, all of a sudden, I promise you in his timing, your deliverer will come and your enemies will scatter. And you will once again take your eyes off of Goliath who looks so big compared to you. When you put your eyes on God, Goliath will look so small. I promise you that. We can stop right there. We get out early. That was an appetizer. That's just walking with Jesus is what that is. That's just, that you know, like sometimes I go to a restaurant to eat. I go there to eat. Like I, I don't just go there for a dish. I, go, I want an appetizer. And like, have you seen our, yeah, I've seen them. I'm looking at three of them. I can't pick which one. We might just go with three. And I've already looked at dessert. Because sometimes I go hungry to eat. I hope you came to the house today. Hungry. For some bread today. Because God's got a word for you today. And I'm so glad that you're here. And I don't take it for granted that you're here. You could be doing so much. Today God's going to speak to your hearts. Would you be seated in the presence of the Lord today? If I turn our attention to the book of Ruth today. The book of Ruth. It's in the Old Testament. We've been in this series entitled, It's Complicated. We're talking about relationships. We're talking about relationships. Relationships are complicated. Some of you know what I'm talking about. You've walked through the pain of divorce. Some of us have walked through that process more than once. We've got scars and wounds. In fact, there are people still bleeding. People still hurting. There are friends of mine that have come home to an empty house from work. They came home to an empty house with a piece of paper, a little note from their spouse that said, I'm gone. I don't love you anymore. There are people that I love and care about. I've walked with them through, and maybe you identify with this. You're walking through it right now. The very person that you thought loved you, you felt secure in their love, is the very person who betrayed you, the very person who deceived you, is the very person who, who cheated on you. And they didn't just cheat once. Like, you could have handled once. Like, once hurt bad enough, but, but this cheating thing was, was not something they just did. The problem was it's who they are. And you are left... And you just feel unraveled, disheveled, incomplete. It's because of the power of a relationship that once was good turned bad. Maybe you're still with someone and your situation is that it's abusive. And it's verbally abusive. I mean, the things that, and the things that are said are literally sucking the life out of you. And if it was just the words that were said would be one thing, but it's not just words. It's not just words, but, but it's a hand being raised. It's, it's, it's physical abuse. There, there are people in our church. This is reality, guys. There are people that are hurting like that. There, there are parents that are here today, and you're hurting. You're hurting. Your kids have said some choice words to you, and they went deep. And you have loved them for so long, and 
You've done your best. You're not perfect, but you tried to raise them right, and they have turned their back on you. They've said things like, I hate you, and it's gone so deep. In fact, it's not only blasted your heart, it, it feels like it's just melted your soul. And, and you just feel unwhole. You, you just feel uh, pieces of me. That's, that's where you're at. For some of you, it's, it's, it's the fact that you're an adult child. You're an adult, but your childhood is still haunting you. And the pain from your childhood and the wounds from your childhood and the memories, the unhealthy memories from your childhood and those relationships that were what he did to you. And you're supposed to love me. You're a family member and you raped me. You raped me. There are people here today and you, you've not forgiven yourself because you had an abortion. And what you did when you were 19, you struggle in your 40s to wrestle with, will God forgive me because of what I did in college? And now my relationships are complicated. I, I can't love because of the guilt and the shame that I'm underneath. And I want to tell you today, there's good news. There's hope. So we turn our attention to the scriptures, to a book, a book called Ruth. It's a book of pain is how it starts out. It's, it, it ends up reminding us that through our pain, God always has a purpose, but there's a process to his purpose. So we go to the book of Ruth. In chapter 1 in Ruth, we find, um, we find Ruth and her family. Elimelech was her husband, and they were in Israel, and in Israel, the food had dried up, and God was chastising or punishing, or, or really a, a better word would be correcting his kids, because whom God loves, he corrects. If you're here, and you're a young person, you're like, man, my parents, man, I wish they'd just leave me alone, you know, and your parents actually care enough to be in your life. They care enough to speak into your life. They care enough to correct you when you're out of line. If you got parents like that, you better get on your knees, throw your hands up, let the tears fall, and thank God Almighty that you got parents that care enough to coach and they care enough to correct. If you're a young person, you think they don't love me. If they love me, they just let me do whatever. No, no, no. They love you, so they love you, so they're going to help you. You know, good news is you have energy. Good news is you have ideas. Bad news is you don't have wisdom. Not every great thought was from God. In fact, a lot of them weren't. And even as a child, we can struggle with relationships. We can feel as a child inferior. We can feel as a child that I'm not good enough. If you're a teacher, we have so many teachers that come here. You're in the education system and, and you have a child in your class that is connected to your heart and you see them and you love them and they are so weak that you just wonder like what is going on at home because there's not love around this child. It doesn't seem that this child is secure and so they've attached to your heart and, and you've seen them where they are and you care about them. You wonder what in the world is wrong with the relationships surrounding them. Like life is just complicated. Relationships get kinked like a hose. And then all of a sudden, what is happening? Like this thing's not working. Oh, it's, it's kinked back there. So many of us are less than what God created us to be because of relation slips and relation shifts. And in this book of Ruth, we find out that whom God loves, he corrects. And, and if I can tell you that God loves you enough to correct you. And God is not this mean God up in heaven with the Louisville slugger bat. And he's God's way. He's the God of the thump. He's just waiting to correct you. He can't wait to, you know, he, that, this, that is not God. God is loving. God is merciful. God is gracious. God is slow to anger. God is quick to forgive. Are you with me today? I'm thankful for a God that will see me and bend down and help me. See me fall down, bend down and help me. See me fall down, bend down and help me. And just like a good parent doesn't get upset with their baby when they're learning how to walk, a heavenly father doesn't get upset with his children when they're learning how to walk. He's good enough to bend down. He's good enough to pick up. He's even good enough to change our diapers when they get messy. Are you with me? That's the God I'm talking about. Some of you need to get that in your spirit today. Because the only sight of God you're ever presented with was God on the throne, high and lifted up, quick to correct, quick to condemn. God of, and I want to tell you something, he is high and lifted up. 
He is on a throne. He is holy. He is awesome. He is powerful. He is sovereign. All those things are true. But he's also the God who knows to get how to get off his throne and to bend down and to meet us right where we are and to love us, to embrace us, to say, this is my son. This is my daughter in whom I'm well pleased. And I'm going to pick you back up and get you walking again. He's the God that runs after the prodigal. Are you with me? And so they get out of Dodge. They get out of Israel. They go to uh, Moab. That's where the food was. And in that place, all hell breaks loose. And Elimelech, Naomi's husband dies, and 10 years later, they're still mourning that loss. I mean, is there anything harder than death? And yet, that's why I'm so thankful for the gospel of Jesus, because he gets the final word, man. Death didn't hold him down. The grave didn't stop him. He came out, got out, and he gave back what he borrowed. He said, you can have your tomb back. I only needed it for a few days. And he walked out alive forevermore. Are you with me? That's who he is. It's not just who he was, it's who he is today. And the fact he can walk out of a tomb means he can get you and I out of any grave, including the one we think will be our final one. But I, I don't know too much thing stronger than death. I mean, death gets our attention. And yet scripture says love is stronger than death. And so they're mourning. And sometimes in relationships, tragedies can unravel the relationship. Or God can leverage tragedy literally to bring the relationship together. That's what God can do. And so here they are, Naomi, she's crying. She's missing her husband, her two sons, Killian and his brother. They are wailing because they're missing their daddy. Maybe some of you know how it is to lose your father. For 10 years, they wish dad had been there. Then they have wives and like we want a dad to be there when our child is born. All those things, real life is happening. And then all of a sudden, her two sons die. They die. So now, Naomi has lost a husband. And 10 years later, both her sons are dead. And she has two daughter-in-loves. I like that. And Orpah and Ruth are now also weeping because they've lost their husbands. And it is out of this tragedy... It is out of this what in the world is going on that we pick up the story in Ruth chapter 1. Let's look at it. Let's go there if we can. Ruth 1, I'm going to read a couple verses today. My prayer is that this will encourage you and help you where you are to know that God sees you where you are and God has not forgotten about you. Then Naomi heard in Moab that the Lord had blessed his people. God will bless his people. God knows how to come to the aid of his people. Just like we talked about, God knows how to get on the scene. And when God gets on the scene, he changes everything. Whatever your struggle is, God knows how to turn your struggle into a story. God knows how to turn your struggle into an incredible story, which is for his glory. And God, when he paints a picture, God will paint a piece. God will paint a part that you and I don't understand. But it always fits in God's picture, because God is a big picture kind of God. God sees the beginning from the end. He's the alpha and the omega, and he's everything in between. Are you with me? So she hears that the Lord began to bless his people again. Maybe you're at the point in your life where you felt like God is correcting me. And, and, and when life gets hard, it doesn't mean that God is correcting you. But if you name the name of Jesus, if you say you're a Jesus follower, and you are going the opposite direction. You are rebelling against him. You are ignoring the Holy Spirit. You're doing whatever you want to do. Then rest assured. Let me say it like this. I'm going to just say it like this. If you're doing whatever the hell you want to do. Do not be surprised. When all that hell comes down on you. I just just put the cookies on the lowest shelf. Just be real. Can we just be real? Can we just be real? Mm -hmm. I know I just said hell in church, but hell's a real place. It's an eternal place, but real, hell, hell is a real place here on earth. Jesus said, I come to give you life and life more abundantly, and the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's hell. Now, there's a, a greater hell, a bigger hell, a worse hell, if I can say it that way. 
But if Jesus came to give us life, Satan came to give you hell. Can I say that? And if you're doing whatever you want, and you're like, I don't care about God. I don't care what God says or thinks about this. I'm going to do my own thing. I know God says this. I'm going to do my own thing. Don't be surprised when your eyes are opened and all of a sudden you're out of Eden. Don't let it be that quiet. Come on, now help me. We can't do whatever we want and then wonder why whatever we want led to a wrong place. Because God's a good father. God's going to bring, God wants to lead us beside still waters. He don't want us to drown in the rapids. But some of you, I, some of you and I, we go right to the rapids and then wonder why we can't, we, this is, we're in over our head. It's because we got away from God. And so God will correct us. God will bring us back. And when we get back in line with him, when we get right with God, you know what? God will begin to bless again. God, those blessings will be flowing again. Someone say flow again. Some of you need God's blessings to flow again in your life. But you got to walk out of the hell you've embraced to get in line with the heaven you desire. And that's what happens. So now they're headed back. And imagine they're going home and home is hard. They're going to go back to Israel and home is hard because they're going to go back to the house where they lived. Then, and now all of a sudden Naomi, she's going to be reminded that Elimelech isn't here. Like he's not here in the bed. He, he's not here at the dinner table. He's not here when we had coffee together every morning. He, he's not here. The words to comfort me, he, the arms to hold me, they're not here. And, and that's how real it is. So them going back to Israel was not easy. It would be reminded of how everything used to feel before the separation and that's the problem with relationships and it getting complicated is when the separation gets in there and now they return and so Naomi and her daughters-in-law got ready to leave Moab to return to her homeland with her two daughters-in-law she sent out from the place where she had been living and they took the road that would lead them back to Judah there are people here today that you need to just get back on the road that you used to be on before you felt so far from God the truth is, listen to me, I love you. The truth is not that God turned his back on you. The truth is not that God went like this. The truth is not that God is not listening to you. The truth is, listen, you can get back on the road and go to where you once were. You can do it. You can do it today. Some of you just got to get back on that road. And that road is narrow, but it's straight. It's straight. It's straight and narrow. I remember being a student pastor, and we took, we took these kids, we took them skiing, and uh, the bus didn't show up, the vans didn't show up to bring us back to the place we are staying. So Pastor Tim, 20-something-year-old, <laughs> yeah, uh, had this great idea. We will walk back. We will walk back. Now, I'm from Florida. All these kids are from Florida. They'd never seen snow, and I'm their fearless leader, and I'm going to lead them back to the place of warmth. The problem was we were in North Carolina and though it may have been like, I don't know, maybe two miles. And I thought, what's two miles? We can carry our skis. We can carry our poles. We can carry, you know, our backpacks for two miles. What's two miles? This was two miles winding like this. And trust me, I felt like we were in the wilderness. And they're like, when are we going to get there? And I'm like, we're almost there. And we weren't almost there. That was just the next bend. Thank God he sent the Calvary. Are you with me? We got pit. You with me? I'm telling you, sometimes life, it can just seem like this. But I'm telling you, if you get on that straight and narrow, the good thing about it is it's straight. Get back on the road that you once were on, and that's what they did. It was leading back to Judah. What's interesting is Judah means, mm, Judah means praise. Some of you, your life tanked, and you used to sing to God. You used to worship God. You used to lift your hands to God. You used to do it not just at church on Sunday, but it was nothing to do it on Monday. It was nothing to do it on Tuesday. It was nothing to do it on Thursday. It was nothing to get in your car and to turn it on and to sing to the king. That's what you used to do. That's the road you need to get on. You need to get back on the road that leads to Judah. It's the road of praise. It's not the road of my circumstances. It's not the road of these so many bends. Let me tell you about my situation. It's the road of praise. So when you raise your praise, what happens is all of a sudden we realize that's not as bad as we thought it was. Are you with me? If we can go around just using our words to describe our situations, all, all of a sudden our situations seem to get worse. Because what we focus on expands. 
But if we'll use that same tongue, not just to talk about our situation, but to talk to the one, to praise the one, to worship the one who can change the situation, all of a sudden, we feel like, you know what? We're in a better place. Get back on the road that leads to Judah. I don't know who you are. Somebody needed that today. Maybe you're in Navarre today and you need that. Get back on that road of praise. Maybe you're in Blackwater and you thought you were going to get out. They were looking at your case again. And you thought you were going to get out and it didn't happen. And now you're just about this close from giving up hope. What I say to you today, sir, raise your praise. What I say to you today is get back on the road that leads to Judah. That road that is praising Judah. Because Judah hasn't changed. <laughs> Judah hasn't changed. And I'm telling you, Judah is what leads us into the presence of God. You had to go through Judah to get to the tabernacle. You got to go through praise to get in the presence of God. And when you get in the presence of God, everything that's been wrong can be changed instantly. God can catapult you out of what took you years, what took you so long. And all of a sudden, God can launch you to the place that you've been praying to, to be at. Are you with me? Get back on the road. First gathering didn't even get that one. That just blessed my heart. Sometimes the Lord will give you some way you're preaching. And bless my heart right there. Get back on the road, leads Judah. Now, Naomi's going to begin to show love and concern for her daughter-in-laws. Verse 8, but on the way, Naomi said to her two daughter-in-laws, go back to your mother's homes. And may the Lord reward you for your kindness to your husbands and me. Can I tell you something? There's a word there called honor. When you honor people, God will honor you. Amen. Honor people. Honor people. Honor people. Honor people. Don't even honor them because they deserve it. Honor them because it brings honor to Jesus when you honor people. I'm telling you. Now listen, if you're going to clap, you got to do better than that. Because that, that's like a, a, a golf clap. And I'm, I'm not impressed with that. I know God's not impressed with that. So whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your, if you're going to clap, clap. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on. You're like, I'm not sure if anyone else. Like, no, just go for it. If you're the only one, be a leader. People will follow. That's right. You say, come on, Tim, preach your I'm preaching my message. I mean, in football, we say if we got it right the first time, we wouldn't have to go back and do it again, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, let's bring our best to God's house, right? If that blesses you, man, it's okay to clap. And so we don't got to be weird, you know what I'm saying? But we can be appreciative. Someone say amen. I'm going to get you talking in a minute. Y'all know y'all help me preach better. And so tragedy comes in and she says, go back to your mama's house and may God honor you. May God bless you because you bless me. Let me ask you a question. If God's blessing hung in the balance of you blessing other people, how big would your blessings be? If the way you're believing God to honor you and to favor you in your life, in your home, in your marriage, in your work, in your finances, what if that hung on how you and I honor other people? How much blessings and favor would God be sending our way? It's just a good thing, just to honor people. Well, they don't deserve it. And neither do I. Dad, you say when he preached, he's like, when I go like this, there are more fingers pointing back at me than pointing at you, right, Dad? That's what you said. I'm, I'm, I'm preaching myself. I want to honor people not because they got my refill right on time, but because there's probably a story I know nothing of. There's probably a stress I know nothing of. There's probably a heartache and heartbreak I know nothing of. And they're made in the image of God. And what I want to leave with them is not the fact that I was frustrated and irritated because you hesitated in refilling my sweet tea. I want you to know God loves you. God sees you. And you might not be having a good day, but God is always having a good day. And if I'm living in the flesh, how can I point you to God in the spirit? You see what I'm saying? So I got to get outside of myself. And so that's what she says. Go back home. Go back home. You've been good to me. May God bless you. What she's saying is go get married and have babies. And she says this here. She says to them, go. See, tragedy can tie you together or it can terminate the relationship. But God ties lives together out of the fabric of tragedy. If tragedy is where you're at in your life, keep your eyes open. Because God is going to put someone or God has already put someone in your life that you need in the middle of that tragedy. Right. So, no, they said. We, won't go. we, we, we want to go with you to your people. Which, that was awesome. 
But Naomi replied, why should, why should you go on with me? Can I still give birth to other sons who, who could grow up and be your husbands? No, 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 my daughters. Return to your parents' homes, for I'm far too old to marry again. And even if it were possible, and I were to get married tonight and bear sons, then what? Would you wait for them to grow up and refuse to marry someone else? Naomi says, no, of course not. My daughters, things are far, watch this now, things are far more bitter for me than for you. Because the Lord himself has raised his fist against me. Watch, watch, watch. We're getting near the end of the message. Watch me. Have you ever been in a place so bad that you literally felt like God raised his fist against you? That's a bad place to be. That's a bitter place to be. And sometimes the situations, the circumstances, the events in our life, it's like lemons just keep coming. And I'm telling you, man, when lemons come, you bring the sugar. You bring the sugar. Because lemons are bitter. And lemons can leave you bitter or they can leave you better. You get to decide. You get to decide if you're going to let that thing bury you alive. And, and I, I don't say this looking down to you. I say this with a heart full of compassion. I've been there before. I know what it's like. I've been there before when it was so bitter. All I could feel was my own bitterness. Interesting thing about lemons. You know, people will say, would you like lemon with your sweet tea? Would you like a lemon with your water? You know, would you like a lot? What? And, and yet... Um, that's some of the best fruit that God ever created. When you actually study what a lemon does. See, we, we say, give me the chocolate. Give me the salt. Give me the butter, baby. We don't say, bring on the lemons. But when I used to live in Miami, my cousins would hop the fence. Lord, forgive them. They would take the neighbor's lemons, some from the ground and some from the tree. And they would hop the fence again. They'd bring them back. And then they'd go get this big old thing called sugar. And they would dip the lemon in the sugar. I don't know if you ever tried it before or not. <laughs> but it'll heal you. <laughs> now, here's what's crazy. Here's what I... We would all dip our lemons <laughs> in the same bag of sugar. <laughs> Not sure that was the smart part. part. We put them in my mouth. And, oh, this is so good. I mean, stolen water is sweet. <laughs> and then we'd all dip it back in there, man. <laughs> oh, this is so good. And we'd do it again. You see, you can bring the sugar to the lemons. You can choose if you're going to get better or you can stay bitter. And she says, things are far more bitter for me than for you. Because the Lord himself has raised, his fin has raised his fist against me. You know what bitterness does? Bitterness only allows you to see your pain. Bitterness allows you to only focus on you. And when you focus on you, listen to me, my God, listen to me. If you will only focus on your pain, your depression, your anxiety, your heartache, your heartbreak, your lemons, your life. She wronged me. He wronged me. If you get to the point where all you can see is your hurt and your pain, what I'm telling you today is it will put you and leave you in a very bad place. And the tragedy, the tragedy is you will see yourself but you will not see those around you. And Naomi was literally wrecked with her own pain. And she could not even minister to the pain of those around her. So the younger ministered to the older. And they said, we see your... Now granted, she lost both, not, both sons and a husband. 
But what I'm telling you is sometimes in the middle of our pain, God has placed us to minister to other people. And nothing will lift you up out of depression. Nothing will lift you up out of feeling sorry for yourself. Nothing will lift you up out of self-pity. Nothing else will lift you up bigger and better than taking your eyes off your own personal problems and saying, Lord, let me see those around me that are hurting. And I'm telling you, if you'll begin to raise your eyes off of your own self and put it on those around you, what will happen is there will actually be joy and hope. It will begin to flow again. It will begin to breathe again. And, and, and she goes on and she says this. She, she says, man, no, 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 go because I'm bitter. I'm bitter. And I'd like to tell you that, that, that bitterness will wreck you. And, 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 and when we cry and when we're in that place, it's okay to be in that place. It's just not okay to stay in that place. I mean, when we cry, he comes. God comes when we cry. And he's closer than you think he is when it comes to tragedy. God weeps, man, when you weep. He weeps when you weep. The thing that's got the tears running... He weeps, but he weeps with joy because he knows you're going through it in the night, but he also know, knows that joy comes in the morning. He knows. He knows it's dark and he knows it's cold, but he knows the sun is rising again. He knows it. And again, they wept together, and Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye. I thought that's hilarious when I was studying for this. I'm like, some of y'all are going to take that as a word from God. Yeah, Pastor Tim, I'm going to kiss my mother-in-law goodbye, too, in Jesus' name. i just taking that word to heart right there. I got a word from God today. I'm going to kiss my mother-in-law goodbye. <laughs> it says, and Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye. Some of y'all are like, I'd like that to be my testimony. <laughs> uh, can I, can, I, can I tell you this, that, that when people choose to walk away from you, let them. That's a word from God to you today. There are people in your life that have chosen to walk away from you. And you are still bound to the hurt, the tragedy, and the heartache of who left you. And you can't even see who still stayed with you. I'm going to preach a little bit more and I'm going to land it. I don't know if you're feeling what I'm feeling today. But there's some people today, you're still hanging on. You're hanging on to the people that left you. Listen, if they left you, let them walk. Let them walk. Let them walk. And it can hurt. It can hurt. It can hurt. But I want to tell you something. Sometimes God allows hurt so that it will help. And listen, if you needed them... In your future, they will still be in your future. But if they chose to walk, let them go. Your destiny isn't tied to them. Let them go, man. Listen, listen, have a party. Have a party. Crank up the music. Now, y'all got to help me here because I like this song. And uh, last, last gathering, they sang it. Navarre, you can sing it. Come on, Blackwater. I know y'all can sing it. Y'all got rhythm. Come on, help me out. Listen, my, one of my favorite worship songs is... It goes something like this. You just jump in with me. But it goes like this. Na, 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 na. Na, 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 na. Hey, hey, hey. Come on, crank it up. Goodbye. Na, 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 na. Come on. Oh, yeah. Come on. Let him. To your mother, to your brother, to your sister. Na, 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 na. Na, 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 na. Hey, hey, to your ex. Goodbye. Listen to me. Listen to me. So, listen, some of y'all been crying too long. You've been crying too long. They got up. They chose to leave you. Let them walk. Let them walk. Let them walk. Let them walk. And you just go. Because you, listen to me. God's heart is not divorce. But sometimes divorce happens. And it hurts and it's real. 
And there are people in this church, you, you, you are hurting so bad because they walked. If it had just been you and them, then one thing, but you got kids. And so daddy walked, mommy walked. And listen, listen, my God, listen to me today. Listen to me. If they walk, listen to me. Listen, there is someone that sticks closer than a brother who will walk with you every step of the way. He will walk with you. And when the waters overflow you, listen, when you think that when you think you're gonna drown, he'll pick you up. When you think you can't take another step, he'll carry you. When you're questioning why there are only one set of footprints in the sand at the beach in Pensacola, you're questioning God. God will say, Hey, big boy, hey, listen, hey, listen, listen, sweetie pie, those weren't your footprints. If you look closely, there, there's a hole in the middle. Those were my footprints. I, I did not leave you. I did not abandon you. I did not forget you. I did not forsake you. I carried you. I embraced you. I picked you up and I walked with you. I walked with you. I walked with you. And I walked with you. And I walked with you. And when you couldn't walk, I walked with you. And, and when you couldn't walk yourself, I carried you and your kids. He's a father to the fatherless. He is a father to the fatherless. I'm telling you, listen, stop weeping about the person that walked. Get back on the road of, that leads to Judah. It's the road of praise. And say, Lord, I didn't want him to leave. Jesus, I didn't see it coming. I didn't want her to leave. Jesus, I'm still hurting from it. But I'm going to turn these tears from sorrow into tears of joy because every woman knows when the water breaks. It's a sign a new life is coming. When the water breaks, is isn't like, oh, no. It's like, thank you, Jesus, we're one step closer. New life is coming. I'm about ready to get this baby up out of here. I'm ready for this new baby to be held in my arms. I'm ready for... Are you with me? Mm-hmm. You need to stop crying about the person that walked out because God put someone in your life. And if you're not careful, you're going to, mm, I feel, you're going to miss the very person that God put you in the middle of your life, in the middle of your pain. It was his purpose in your pain. And if you're not careful, you're just going to keep crying and miss who God put because Orpah walked, but Ruth stayed. For every, for every Orpa, there's a Ruth. My, mm, y'all, y'all know this is the last gathering. Y'all know I got more than my message, but I'm no, I'm not gonna keep going, cause I'll keep going and going and going, and y'all be, y'all, be, yeah, but y'all be like, it's dinner time, Pastor Tim. I love Jesus, but please let your people go. I'm just telling someone today, God has placed a Ruth right in front of you. And you're still wiping the tears from Orpah, walking away so much you can't see the Ruth in front of you. And maybe Ruth hasn't come. Maybe Ruth is coming. Maybe Ruth is coming. For some of you, God has put someone in your life. And you're just being picky about, well, I don't like this about him. And I don't listen, listen, listen. Listen. I don't like the way he dresses, but he's a man. He can't match. He's a man. He, 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 he gets hot and sweaty. He, he, he's a man. Listen, listen, listen. You, 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 can, you can take a man of character shopping. But you can shop all day, and if that man doesn't have character, it don't matter how good he looks. Because it's, it's not what's on the outside, it's what is on the inside. Are you with me? Some of you got a Ruth right in front of you. We're going to get to Boaz, believe it, in, in, in a little bit. <laughs> in a few weeks, maybe. We're going we're gonna to get to the best of the story, which is the rest of the story. But some of y'all, you're too busy moaning and crying over Yoaz when God has a Boaz coming for you. Yoaz was a yo-yo. You need to let the yo-yo go. Because when I was a boy, I spoke as a boy. I did things as a boy. Let him go. Let him walk. Because Yoaz was what walked away. 
Hey, if you're getting offended right now, just rebuke that spirit of religion. In Jesus' name, rebuke it. Rebuke it. And lighten up a little bit. And thank God that Boaz is coming. <laughs> and Boaz is better than Yoaz. And that's okay. And one day, Yoaz will meet Boaz. And Yoaz will say, oh my goodness, I'm a Yoaz. You're a Boaz. You're a Boaz. Some of y'all, some of y'all need to thank God Boaz is coming. That's chapter two. We're going we gonna to pick it up next week. Jesus, I just want to thank you today. We're having some fun. You're the king of fun. God, if we can't laugh in church, my goodness, help us. Thank you for those that laugh. Thank you, God. We, we want to laugh. There's a time to laugh. And God, there are people, they're laughing. They're being set free because there's a Ruth in the house. There is, is a Boaz that is coming. And so, God, we... We, we weep with those that weep. We mourn with those that mourn. But, God, we are so thankful, Lord, that you are not just the God of yesterday, but you're the God of today and you're the God of tomorrow, Lord Jesus. And what happened yesterday that we thought was a setback was a, a setup for a comeback, Jesus. And I just believe, Spirit of God, you're ministering to people today who are right in the middle of their pain, Lord, and you're reminding them today that there is purpose in their pain. There's purpose. And you never waste anything, God. You never waste pain. And Lord, you may allow right now the sorrow and the tragedy for a season, God. But I promise you and declare in the name of Jesus that better things are yet to come. And that if it's not good yet, God is not done yet. So hold on. Tie a knot to the character of God and hold on. Get back on the road to Judah, the road of praise. Because your deliverer sees you, and he's coming. And I prayed in Jesus' name, amen, with heads bowed and eyes closed. If you're here today and you're not sure if you died, if you go to heaven, you're not positive that you have a relationship with Jesus. If you're here today and you know you are so lost, and you are looking and searching, I'd say to you, you're in the best place. You're in the right place. And by that, I mean the presence of God. God loves you so much. The, the Old Testament tells us about the, the old news. It was the bad news. It wasn't fake news. It was real news, but it was bad news. And that news is, is that, that, that we sinned. And in our sin, in choosing our sin over God, we choose and chose separation is what we, what we chose. We chose separation from God. And, and, and it all came through disobedience, and, and, and disobedience allowed sin in the world, and, and sin brought a friend, and the friend was death, and, and we wanted the sin, but we didn't want the death, but the death was a consequence of, of the invite that was given to sin, and sin showed up, and death showed up, and, 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 and death happens to every person because every person is sin, so, so the payment of sin is death. That's the bad news, but I got good news today, and that is that God loves you, and God is for you, and he's not angry at you. He's not mad at you. He's, he's madly in love with you. And he loves you enough in spite of your sin. God chose us. A mess. And he chose to redeem us. That means that he chose to take what was wrong and make it right. And so while we were sinners, God died for us. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. He chose us. So, so you can't get clean and come to Jesus. You come to Jesus and get clean. You don't try to get your life put all back together and then say, okay, God, here I am. I'm better now. You just are real. You just reveal what's real that needs to heal. You say, God, here I am. I'm a sinner. I've rebelled against you. I've cursed you. I've run, run away from you. I've, I've done all these things against you. And I knew you wanted me to do this, but I didn't. I knew you didn't want me to do that, but I did. And, and, and so now, God, today, I, I just, I realize you love me enough to die for me and he did die for you and he, he bled for you and his blood was a, the precious blood of God that was shed he was a lamb of God and that blood was shed to take away not just to cover but to cleanse your sin your sins were not swept under a rug your sins were taken out to the trash and the cool thing about Jesus he doesn't remember our sins so when we confess our sins God is faithful to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all stains that sin left. 
and he's good enough. He forgets our sins. He remembers them no more. As far as the east is from the west, God removes our sins from us. He takes it out. He never puts it in our face again. Never reminds us of it again. He forgives us. That's the loving God that you need. And that's the loving God. We don't deserve, but that's the loving God that has run after you every day of your life. Waiting for that one moment when you finally say yes. And today's that day. Today is the day of salvation. If you're here today and you've never done that, you're watching online right now. You're watching on your cell phone. you got a tablet in your hands. You're watching via Facebook. You're watching today and that's where you are. All you have to do is realize he already did it. So it's not what you do, it's what he did. What did he do? He died, shed his blood, he was buried, and three days later he rose again. And so if you will transfer your trust from all the churches you went to, all the churches you joined, all the good things you thought that would be good enough to get you there, no, 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 your ticket is Jesus. It's only Jesus. It's not Jesus plus something. It's just Jesus. And he loves you enough to say that he's the way, the truth, and the life. If you will come to him today, if you will receive him as a savior, he will come in. The spirit of God will take residence in you. You'll be pressure washed, whitewashed, power washed with the blood of Jesus. And your name will be written in heaven if you do that today. And, and you don't have to leave today wondering if you have peace with God. You can make it right right now. Right now, wherever you are. You're at home watching. You're in prison at Blackwater. You're in Navarre watching right now. You're here in Gulf Breeze. Wherever you are, you can do that by confessing with your mouth that he is the Lord. Confessing with your mouth you're a sinner. You need a savior. And believing in your heart that he not only died, he died for you. He not only rose again, he rose again for you. Romans tells us that if you do that, you will be, here's the word, saved. So how we do this is we we pray with our mouth. And I'm going to lead you in a prayer, and you can repeat after me. In fact, we'll all say it together because there are people here who will say it for the first time. So we're going to walk beside them. We're going to help them get to this part of the message, this invitation. We're kind of going to walk with them to Jesus. And when you say these words, you're not going through me. You're not going through me to get to Jesus. You don't have to do that. That's why Jesus came. He came so you could go straight to him. Isn't that cool? So right now, would you pray this prayer? And would you just, just receive God's love today, God's forgiveness today? And we just confess it together. Would you say, just repeat after me. Would you say, Jesus, I am a sinner. And I do need a savior. And I feel your love. And I receive your love. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying for me. I declare Jesus is Lord. I believe you rose again. I give you my life. I receive your life. Now teach me, Spirit of God, how to live. In Jesus' name, amen. Everyone look right up here. We're almost done. If you prayed that today for the very first time, can we celebrate with you? Can we do that? Here's how we do that. I'm going to count to three. Last gathering right here in Gulf Breeze. I didn't get to one. And we had a guy sitting right over here. He already had his hand in the air, man. He had big guns. <laughs> that bicep, that forearm was in the air. He like, yeah, yeah, I'll do that. It was amazing, man. Our church started clapping. I was so fired up that gathering. And I, I believe there are people here, there are people in Navarre, there are people in Blackwater, and people watching online. Last week, there was like 1,300 of you watching online. There are people watching online right now. You just did that. Let us know. Send us an email right now on Facebook. Let us know. However you're watching YouTube, let us know. Connect with us. However you're watching, let us know. If you're here, if you're in Navarre, if you're in Blackwater, here's how you let us know. You raise your hand. And we're going to give you a gift bag. A gift bag, a gift bag with some gifts in there that will help you. It's really cool. S super simple. I want you to raise your hand on the count of three. Raise it high. Don't hesitate. Procrastinate. Don't wait. Hold it up high on the count of three. Here we go. Ready? One, two, three. Did you raise it up? That's right. Hold it up. Hold it up high. I'm so proud of you. Hold it up high. Come on. Let's clap for him. Hold it up, Navar. Hold it up. Hold it up, Blackwater. Let us get that gift to you. We're so proud of you guys.